astronomer Patrick Moore goes back to the future. 11, Houston, if that's not the Earth, we're in trouble. That's the Earth, and we have a very good view of it. Okay, I'm going to leave that one foot up there, and uh, both hands down to about the fourth rung up. Okay, Neil. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Zero. Lift off. We have a lift off. This is the 26th entry tractor at Hurstman Sir Castle in Sussex, the old site of the Royal Greenwich Observatory, and I have a tremendous affection for it. In the pre-Apollo days, that's to say the 1950s and early 1960s, I was a very unimportant member of a very large official lunar mapping team, and I was sometimes able to use this telescope for my lunar work. I remember I used to arrive here late at night on my ancient motorcycle. I used to spend hours at the eyepiece wearing my old flying jacket to keep out the cold, charting lunar features and making drawings and maps. And frequently, a little soft background music. It's strange now to remember that I was using these telescopes to map the moon long before the first astronauts actually went there. It was in the mid-50s that the six telescopes were moved from London to rural Sussex, where the glare of city lights and the pea soup fogs could no longer interfere with observation. Obviously, my moon mapping was on at night, so I hardly ever saw the dome in the daytime. And you know, at night, it looks quite eerie. In the sunlight, well, quite different. You'd hardly believe it was the same place. These domes make up what's called the equatorial group. Each telescope is equatorially mounted, set up on a polar axis which points to the celestial pole. This means that the telescope will automatically follow the object as it tracks across the sky because of the Earth's rotation. This group of buildings was designed by Brian O'Rourke, who were very active in the British modern movement. It's a good example of the vision of post-war buildings that are also highly functional. For example, this bench would be merely decorative anywhere else. But here, it's very useful indeed for astronomers to sit on when they look up at the night sky waiting for the clouds to clear. And I know because I've done it. It may even be that what appears to be merely a decorative feature on the pathway connecting the domes is rather more than that. Remember, you're working in the dark. You can't shine a bright torch anywhere near the dome for obvious reasons. Um, if you step off the smooth stone onto the pebbles, you know straight away that you've gone off track. When the Royal Greenwich Observatory originally revealed its plan to build on this site, <laughs> there was an outcry. The Royal Fine Arts Commission was concerned. The construction was proposed just a quarter of a mile from Hurstmonster's 15th century castle. The Commission insisted on an architect of Rourke's calibre should be hired to ensure that the design of the buildings would take into account their picturesque surroundings, and that surely was sensible enough. <coughs> the bases of the domes were built of wood burnt Sussex red brick, and unusually, the tops of the domes were coated with copper, so they would turn green and blend with the countryside which, as you can see, they have. Of course, the Royal Greenwich Observatory was then under the control of the Admiralty, and we certainly weren't allowed to forget it. <laughs> Look at these. O'Rourke had a nautical background. In the 30s, his application of a modern vision to the Orient Line ships was hailed as a landmark in the evolution of the modern liner. And this maritime imagery still persists in O'Rourke's work here at the observatory. Interesting design. It is rather like a ship's ladder. In his ships, 
He developed a precise language with geometric detail and uncompromising line that's echoed everywhere in the observatory. No detail was too small. Look at this. Note that this door handle points downwards unusually, and to open the door, you do that. That's because when the door handle is in its rest position, so to speak, it doesn't spoil the architectural line. Even his deckside-covered promenades, designed for panoramic views of the oceans, are mirrored in the observatory corridors, which you can gaze out at the sky. And I can assure you, it's quite impressive. The Royal Observatory stay at Hurstminster ended in the 1980s. Against the advice of almost all the astronomers, the observatory was moved to Cambridge, leaving the equatorial group of telescopes deserted. I felt very depressed. The astronomers had gone. Everything was silent. The whole place appeared to be in a state of total decay. For me, these buildings, so ethereal and otherworldly at night, symbolize the achievements of the 20th century. Standing by for the outboard engine cut down now. 